diesel special delivery. It was market day on the island of Sodor. The engines were very busy, chuffing and puffing, taking freight cars of fruit and vegetables to market. Diesel wasn't going to market. He had to take slates to the school. The school roof was broken, and it was going to rain. The roof needed the slates to be fixed. Diesel clanked through Maithwaite Station. James was there. <laughs> Children were clapping and cheering. James was very proud. I have been clapped and cheered all morning. I have a very special special. Diesel was puzzled. What's so special about your special? <laughs> then, Diesel saw that James was taking pretty round pink piglets to Farmer Trotter's farm. Aww. I never have pretty pink piglets to deliver. I am never clapped and cheered. That's because you are a diesel. <laughs> Special coming through! And James whooshed proudly out of the station. Diesel clattered off. He wanted to follow James. He wanted to be clapped and cheered. Then, along the track, Diesel saw Thomas. Thomas was puffing to market. He had a freight car of round, shiny apples. Where are you going with those apples, Thomas? I'm taking them to market. I must hurry. I have a very busy day. Then, Diesel had an idea. Those apples are just as pretty as James's piglets. If I take them, I will be clapped and cheered just like James. So, Diesel oiled next to Thomas. I'm not busy today. I can take your apples to market. Thomas was surprised. Thank you, Diesel. So, Diesel left his slate in a siding. He was coupled up to Thomas's freight car of round, shiny apples and hurried to be cheered and clapped just like James. Diesel found James at Marin Station. Children were on the platform. They were clapping and cheering James and his piglets. Nobody cheered and clapped Diesel and his round, shiny apples. Diesel was upset. I thought my apples were just as pretty as James's piglets. I will find something else that is sure to be cheered and clapped. Diesel clanked and clattered away. Then, Diesel saw Rosie. Rosie was pulling a flatbed of pretty bright flowers. Where are you going with those flowers, Rosie? I'm taking them to market. I must hurry. I'm very busy. Then, Diesel had another idea. Those flowers are as pretty as James's piglets. If I pull those flowers, I will be clapped and cheered, just like James. I'm not busy today, Rosie. I will take your flowers to market for you. Rosie was surprised. Thank you, Diesel. Diesel was coupled up to Rosie's pretty bright flowers. Diesel felt very happy. Soon, Diesel saw James at a crossing. Children were cheering and clapping. Diesel oiled to a stop with his apples and flowers. No one cheered and clapped. Diesel was upset. I thought my apples and flowers were just as pretty as James's pretty pink piglets. 
but no one is cheering or clapping. James puffed proudly away. Diesel clung crossly to market. Diesel clattered back from market. He passed Farmer Trotter's farm. There was James's wagon of pretty pink piglets. Then, Diesel had a very special idea. If I take James's piglets to the school children, they are sure to clap and cheer. So Diesel buffered up to the piglet's wagon. And he hooted happily away, as fast as his wheels could rattle. Diesel arrived at the school. He saw children standing outside. Rattling rods, they are sure to clap and cheer me now. But the children didn't clap and they didn't cheer. The children were wet and they were worried. Trembling tracks. The children don't want to see pretty pink piglets. They want a new roof for their school. Then there was trouble. Sir Topham had arrived on Thomas. He was cross. Diesel, what are you doing with James's piglets? And where is the slate for the school roof? Diesel felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. I have been very silly. I brought the piglets to show the children because I wanted to be clapped and cheered. But now I see that the children don't want pretty pink piglets. They want a new roof for their school. That's right, Diesel. You must put this right. Now. Diesel clattered away. He wanted the children to be happy. Diesel rattled and raced. He had forgotten all about being clapped and cheered. He only wanted to be really useful. I must get back to the school with the slate before it rains again. Diesel arrived at Farmer Trotter's farm. I'm sorry, Farmer Trotter. I took your piglets to show to the children. I wanted to be cheered and clapped like James. But now, I know I should have taken the slate to the school. That was much more important. Farmer Trotter was happy to have his piglets back. And Diesel was happy to hurry to pick up the slate. Soon, Diesel was racing back to the school. As fast as his wheels could whir. Diesel wheezed into the school. The children were still waiting. Don't worry, children. Here are the slates for your roof. The children clapped and cheered. Yeah! Hooray for Diesel! Now he won't be wet. Hip, hip! Hooray for Diesel! Hooray for Diesel! Hip, hooray for Diesel! Now he won't be wet. Diesel heard the children cheer. He saw them clap. I have never been happier. Victor says yes. On the island of Sodo, the engines like to puff and huff their hardest. Sometimes they huff too hard. Their pistons pop. Their traction rods rattle. And then they must go to the steamworks to be fixed. Victor liked fixing engines, and he liked being busy. And today was a very busy day at the steamworks. Cars and engines were everywhere. Hurry up with those valves. We don't have all day, you know. Percy was waiting to be painted. I'd like to be gleaming and green, please, Victor. And Edward had to be fixed. My broken boiler is bothering me, Victor. Victor clickety-clacked along the tracks from one engine to another. I know, I know, my friends. You all need to be fixed. And you all want to be fixed right away. But I only have one set of wheels, you know. Then Sir Topham Hatt arrived on Gordon. Gordon spluttered and stuttered as he steamed. 
Victor, Gordon's valves are blocked. They must be cleaned as soon as possible. The children are going on a boat trip. Gordon must be ready to take them to the docks at tea time. Victor was worried. There was no room for Gordon in the steamworks. And the workmen were all busy. But Victor didn't want to upset Sir Topham Hatt. Of course, sir. I will have Gordon puffing perfectly in no time. That made Sir Topham Hatt very happy. Well done, Victor. I'm pleased to see that you are a really useful engine. Really useful engines do their best, and they are the best. Thank you, sir. Thomas chuffed cheerfully up to his friend. Oh my, Victor. Sir Topham Hatt is very pleased with you. Victor puffed with pride. Thank you, Thomas, my friend. Now, what can I do for you? I have a loose foot plate. Victor knew he had too much to do. He knew he didn't have time to fix Thomas's foot plate, but he wanted to be the best. He wanted to be a really useful engine. Come on in, my friend. I'll fix your foot plate. Gordon, chuff back to let Thomas in. Come on, move over everyone, please. What about my blocks valves? And my broken boiler. And my gleaming green paint. And our valves. We were here first. Sorry, boss. It's a slip of the hook. Victor huffed and heaved. All in good time, my friends. Fix Thomas's foot plate, please. Then, Emily steamed in. She had to collect an important visitor from Brendam Docks. Emily, my friend. Hello. What can I do for you? My buffers need a perfect polish. Victor knew he had too much to do. He knew he didn't have time to polish Emily's buffers. But he wanted to be the best. He wanted to be a really useful engine. Come along in, Emily, my friend. I will have your buffers polished perfectly. Emily wheezed and squeezed in front of Gordon. What about my blocked valves? My broken boiler. My gleaming green paint. My foot plate. Our valves. We were here first. <laughs> Sorry, boss. Slip of the hook. Fizzling fireboxes. Give Emily some room. Puff back. Puff back, please. What about my blocked valves? Then there was trouble. Black smoke and soot shot from Gordon's valves all over Sir Topham Hatt, who had just arrived in his bright blue car. Suddenly, Sir Topham Hatt's car wasn't bright blue anymore. It was black and sooty. Victor gasped. Fizzling fireboxes. Oh, the indignity. Heaving hooks. Was that meant to happen, boss? No, it was not. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. What are you doing, Victor? My car is ruined, and Gordon isn't fixed and ready to take the children to the docks. I thought you were really useful. Victor felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. This is a disaster, and it's all my fault. I wanted to show you that I really am the best, that I am really useful. So I tried to do everything, and I ended up doing nothing. Can I help, boss? No, thank you, Kevin. Now I must do something. Victor steams sadly to Sir Topham Hatt. Sir, if you will let me, I can have Gordon ready in time. Your car will be bright blue again, all the engines will be fixed, and I will be really useful again. Sir Topham Hatt could see Victor was sorry. Very well, Victor, but you'd better hurry. Victor smiled. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. 
Please, my friends, I have been silly. Now I ask you to help me. I can fix all of you, but I cannot fix all of you at the same time. Some of you will have to wait. The engines hooted and tooted. We'll all help you, Victor. Standing by, boss. Victor smiled at his friends. Thank you. First of all, Gordon's valves must be cleaned. What about my buffers? Emily, my friend, your buffers are going to be beautiful for your visitor. Tomorrow, I will have them polished perfectly, but not today. What about my broken boiler? Victor smiled kindly at Edward. Your boiler will be bubbling soon. Please wait. Then Percy puffed up. I really want to be gleaming green. Victor chuckled. I know you do, Percy. And you will be the greenest green there is. But maybe not today. Wait, please, with your friend Edward. Harry and Bert creaked crossly. We were here first! I know you were, my friends. I have not forgotten you. After Gordon, it will be your turn. This made Harry and Bert very happy. Then, Victor chuffed to Thomas. And your footplate, Thomas, my friend. I was silly to say I could fix it today. Don't worry, Victor. I can easily come back tomorrow. Thank you, Thomas. Kevin trundled up. Good work, boss. Later, Victor looked happily around the steamworks. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Sir, Gordon's valves are cleaned and his funnel is steaming. Well done, Victor. I see you are once more a really useful engine. That made Victor very happy. Thank you, sir. Boss, do you think I'm really useful? Victor smiled. Yes, you are, my friend. We are really useful together. <laughs> <laughs> Being Percy. It was a sunny day on the island of Sodor. The engines were huffing and chuffing as they clickety-clacked along the tracks to Brendam Docks. The docks were busy. Cranky was creaky with crates, and Salty was shunting, as Percy puffed in to collect the mail cars. Excuse me, Thomas. I excuse me, James. I must collect my cars on time. Thomas and James didn't move out of Percy's way. Percy tried again. Excuse me. If I'm late with my mail, I won't be a really useful engine. Just then, Gordon thundered into the docks. Out of my way! Express coming through! Salty moved out of Gordon's way. Percy saw this. I wish I was as loud as Gordon. Then everyone would chuff out of my way. Gordon collected his passengers. Then he huffed grandly away. Out of my way! Express coming through! This made an idea fly into Percy's funnel. I shall be as loud as Gordon. Then the other engines are sure to take notice of me. So Percy pumped his pistons and peeped as loudly as he could. Mail coming through! Thomas and James were surprised. Cinders and ashes! Flatten my funnel! It's Percy! And the two engines steamed swiftly out of Percy's way. Being loud made Percy feel very important. Percy liked feeling important. Now I shall be like Gordon. And Percy puffed proudly away. Percy clickety-clacked cheerfully. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. Then, Percy saw Toby on the track ahead. 
Toby was steaming slowly. Percy had to steam slowly, too. Percy didn't want to steam slowly. So, an idea popped into his pistons. Out of my way! Mail coming through! Toby was so surprised, he juddered and shuddered to a stop. But he didn't puff out of Percy's way. Hello, Percy. Percy was disappointed. Then, Percy saw Gordon clatter past on the express line. Out of my way! Express coming through! Fizzling fireboxes! Gordon is fast. I shall be fast! So at the next junction, Percy switched tracks. Now, he was on the express line. And with a whoosh and a whoosh, Percy whistled away like the wind. And like Gordon, Percy felt important. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. Percy was going so fast on the express line, he raced straight through Maithwaite Station. Out of my way! Mail coming through! And left the mail sacks behind. Percy felt happy. He was fast. He was loud. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. At Marin Station, Percy saw Alicia Botti on the platform. She was going to have dinner with Sir Topham Hatt. Hello, Percy. I'm waiting for Gordon to take me to Knapford. Percy felt loud. Percy felt fast. Percy felt he was just as good as Gordon. He could take very important passengers, too. Step inside my cab, Miss Botty. I will take you there in no time. And Percy whooshed away with Alicia Botti to Knapford Station. Percy felt proud. He was fast, he was loud, and he had a very important passenger. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. And Percy raced and rattled right past Sir Topham Hatt. Then there was trouble. Gordon was roaring towards Percy. Out of my way! Express coming through! Out of my way! Mail coming through! But Gordon didn't get out of Percy's way. Suddenly, Percy was worried. Oh, my! Oh, no! Oh, help! Whoa! Whoa! Gordon swerved and swayed into a side. He bashed the buffers and toppled off the tracks. Percy felt terrible. Now, he didn't feel bold at all. He felt very silly. I'm sorry, Gordon. I wanted to be you. I wanted to be fast and loud and very important. But now you can't puff at all. And it's all my fault. Gordon grumped. Mm. Percy puffed. I will put all of this right by just being Percy. Mm. First, Percy took Alicia Botti to Sir Topham Hatt at Knapford. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, Miss Botti. I was trying to be Gordon, but I know that I'm only Percy. Next, he puffed into the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Excuse me, James. I made Gordon derail. Would you pull Rocky with me to help Gordon? I'm not strong enough alone. James sniffed. 
Then, he felt sorry for Percy. Very well. Buffer up. And together, they heaved and hauled Rocky to help Gordon. Thank you, James. Thank you, Rocky. I must hurry now to pick up the mail. And Percy huffed and chuffed to pick up the mail sacks. Slowly, Percy steamed away to Knapford. I'm really just Percy. I'm small and I'm green. I'm silly, I'm slow. I don't want to be seen. Percy chuffed into Knapford. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Percy's firebox fizzed with fear. Percy, why did you want to be Gordon? You're perfect being Percy, and that's what I want you to be. All the engines hooted and tooted in agreement, and Percy smiled. He was happy being Percy. Thomas and the Snowman Party. It was a snowy winter's day on the island of Sodor. The children were busy building the biggest snowman on Sodor. All the engines wanted to help the children. They were very excited. Thomas whooshed into the town square. Thomas's best friend Percy was there. So was James. Percy was smiling. Hello, Percy. You look happy. There's going to be a snowman party, Thomas. Farmer McCall's sheepdog will hunt the hat. The brass band will play. And Mr. Bubbles the Clown is going to do magic hat tricks. Thomas's firebox fizzed. That will be fun. Then Sir Topham had arrived. There is a lot to do for the snowman party. You are all to huff your hardest. Percy. You will collect cupcakes from the bakery. Right away, sir. <laughs> James, you must collect the special guests from Brendam Docks. Yes, sir. <laughs> and Thomas, you are to pick up an important package from Knapford Station. Thomas pumped his pistons proudly. Then he saw that the children looked sad. Our snowman has a carrot for a nose, coal for his eyes and mouth, and a brightly colored scarf. But he doesn't have a hat. Thomas didn't want the children to be sad. Thomas wanted to help the children. Don't worry. I'll find a hat for your snowman. So Thomas didn't go to Napper Station to pick up the important package. He chuffed cheerfully away to find a hat. Thomas clickety-clacked along the track. I'll look and look and find a hat. The children will be pleased with that. Thomas puffed past Farmer McCall's farm. Suddenly, he huffed to a halt. There was a big brown hat on a hay bale. Thomas's boiler bubbled with excitement. This would be a very good hat for the children's snowman. That would make them happy. So Thomas's driver put the big brown hat into Thomas's cab. And Thomas huffed happily away. Thomas clattered along the track. I found a hat! I found a hat! The children will be pleased with that. And Thomas reached on to pick up the important package. On his way to Napford, Thomas chuffed through Marin Station. Suddenly, he screeched to a stop. There was another big hat on the platform bench. Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. This hat is even bigger than the big brown hat. It will make the children even happier. So Thomas's driver put the big hat in Thomas's cab. I found a bigger, better hat. The children will be pleased with that. And Thomas puffed perkily away to pick up the important package. 
On his way to Knapford, Thomas steamed through Maithwaite Station. Suddenly, he stopped. There was a very big hat sitting on some suitcases. It was blue and green and red and purple. It was the most colorful hat Thomas had ever seen. It was also the biggest. This hat would make the children happiest of all. So Thomas's driver put the big colorful hat into Thomas's cab. I found the biggest, brightest hat. The children will be pleased with that. And Thomas wheezed away to pick up the important package. Then Thomas chuffed to a junction. Toby was there. Toby was worried. The children have finished building their snowman, but they still don't have a hat for him. Thomas gasped. I have a hat for the children's snowman. I'll take it to them right away. Thomas pumped his pistons and raced to the town square. Hello, Percy. Hello, James. Percy and James look sad. Farmer McCall has lost his big brown hat. Now his sheepdog can't hunt the hat. The brass band haven't arrived. They're looking for the conductor's big hat. And Mr. Bubbles has lost his blue, red, green, and purple hat. Now he can't do any magic hat tricks. Thomas felt terrible. Cinders and ashes. I have all those hats in my cab. Percy and James were surprised. I wanted to help the children. I wanted to find a hat for their snowman. I wanted to make them happy. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Where is my important package, Thomas? I'm sorry, sir. Your important package is still at Knapford Station. I was trying to find a hat for the children's snowman. Now you don't have your package, and I have spoiled the children's fun. Sir Topham Hat looked cross. I'm sure I can put this right, sir. Very well, Thomas. So Thomas raced away as fast as his wheels could whir. Thomas puffed into Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hatt's important package was put into his cab, and Thomas raced quickly away. Next, Thomas wished to Farmer McColl's farm. Farmer McColl and his sheepdog were looking for his big brown hat. I have your hat, sir. The children are waiting for you at the snowman party. So Farmer McCall and his sheepdog jumped into Annie, and Thomas steamed swiftly away. Then Thomas puffed to Marin Station. The brass band were still looking for the conductor's hat. I have your hat, sir. All aboard for the town square and the snowman party. So the conductor and the brass band climbed into Annie and Clarabelle, and Thomas raced off. Thomas hurried to Maithwaite Station. Mr. Bubbles had been looking for his magic hat everywhere. I have your hat, sir. Hooray, Thomas! Now I can come to the party and do my magic tricks. So Mr. Bubbles bounced on board, and Thomas raced like the wind back to the town square and the children's snowman. Thomas chuffed into the town square. His axles ached, and his cheeks were rosy red. Here I am, sir. I have Farmer McCall and his sheepdog, the brass band, Mr. Bubbles, and your important package. Very good, Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt opened his important package. Inside was a brand new top hat. Excellent, Thomas. Just what I needed. And this, children, may be just what you need. A hat for your snowman. The children cheered. And Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. This was the grandest snowman on Sodor. 
Jumping Joby Wood. One of the most special places on the island of Sodor is the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Here, Captain chugs, Rocky rolls, and Harold hovers. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt arrived at the rescue center. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Thomas. I have an important announcement. The engines hushed and huffed. The mayor would like some Joby Wood to build a summer house. He wants the work to start straight away. Thomas's boiler bubbled brightly. This meant a trip to Misty Island. Thomas liked Misty Island. Please, sir, may I go to Misty Island to fetch the Joby Wood? Bash Dash and Ferdinand rocked and rolled. Please, please, can we go too? We know just what to do. That's right, boss. Boss? Sir Topham Hat. Sir Topham Hat. That's right. I would like you three logging locos to stay here on Sodor to learn the ways of my railway. Thomas, you and Edward will go to Misty Island to pick up the Joby Wood. You must leave straight away. Thomas puffed proudly. We'll take the tunnel, Edward. The logging loco spluttered and stuttered. You'll need our help. Oh, Wheezy can be wild. And he, haw is just plain crazy. That's right. Thomas was stern. No, thank you. Edward and I won't need your help. Old Wheezy and Hee Haw won't be any trouble to us. We'll show them how to be really useful. So Thomas and Edward clickety clack down the Misty Island Tunnel. With a huff and a puff and a whoosh of their wheels, they puffed onto Misty Island. Then they raced and they rolled all the way to the Misty Island Logging Station. Thomas was excited. The Joby Wood gleamed and glowed in the sunshine. Edward's firebox fizzed and fluttered. Oh my! This is a very strange place. Thomas chuckled cheerfully. Don't worry, Edward. When I first chuffed here, I thought Misty Island was strange, too. But now, I just think it's special. I'll show you around. Edward's wheels wobbled. Very well, Thomas. After you. So Thomas puffed proudly on. This is the zip line bridge. <laughs> and this is the sawmill. It's very noisy. This is the logging pond. It's loaded with logs. And those two are Old Wheezy and Hee Haw. They're log loaders. Edward was puzzled. They're what? They're log loaders. They load logs. And they're crazy. Edward trembled on the tracks. Oh, my. Then, Thomas puffed perkily towards the Shake Shake Bridge. And this is the Shake Shake Bridge. We have to cross this, Edward, to pick up the Joby logs. Edward gasped. Don't worry, it's just a bit wobbly. So, Edward wheezed and wished onto the Shake Shake Bridge. The bridge wobbled and wibbled with every wheel turn. Bust my buffers! Then Edward stopped. He was scared. Just then, Bash Dash and Ferdinand rattled in. We thought you might need help. And it looks like you do. That's right. No, thank you. We don't need your help. We can do it alone. We'll push the log safely to Sodor and home. If you say so. And Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand rolled away. 
Then Thomas clickety clacked along the track to Old Weasel. I'll have these logs loaded in no time. Old Weasel wished and wheezed. He jiggled and joggled. He puffed and popped into action. Edward was worried. Oh dear. Don't worry, Edward. You must be firm. Suddenly, Old Wheezy grabbed and groaned and whirled and hurled logs everywhere. Logs bounced off Edward. Blistering boilers. And flew past Thomas. Cinders and ashes. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clacked back. Jumping Joby! It looks like you need our help now! That's right! No, thank you. We don't need your help. We can do it alone. We'll push the log safely to Sodor and home. If you say so. And Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand rattled away. Thomas huffed to Hee Haw. I know Hee Haw will help us. But Hee Haw had run out of oil. It spluttered and stuttered. Thick black smoke all over James and Sir Topham Hat. Sir Topham Hat was cross. Thomas, what is going on? The mayor is waiting for the Joby Wood. Edward is swinging on a bridge. Logs are jumping like frogs. And my shiny red coat is ruined. Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. This is all my fault. I thought I didn't need help, but I do. And I know exactly who I need to help me. I'll fetch them now. Thomas, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clattered and chattered down the tunnel, all the way to the logging station. I was silly to think I could do this alone. I need your help. Looks like you do. So we're here to give it. Do as we say. And we'll show you the way. That's, That's right. right. So Thomas let the logging locos help him. Shake, shake, make me quake. Make me quake until I shake. <laughs> Edward was so surprised, he wibbled and wobbled straight off the Shake Shake Bridge. Then the logging loco showed Edward and Thomas how to catch Joby logs as they jumped through the air and bumped onto their flatbed. Finally, Dash's driver filled Hee Haw with oil. Now it could rumble and tumble logs to the cars. At last, the Joby logs were loaded. Thomas led the engines all the way back to Sodor and to the waiting Sir Topham Hat. You are all really useful engines. Together, you are a team to be proud of. That's right! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the indignity. Gordon is the grandest engine on Sodor. He puffs the fastest, steams the strongest, and pulls the express, which makes him very proud. One morning, Gordon huffed into the steamworks. He was grumpy. Good morning, Gordon, my friend. There's nothing good about it. The wheels on my express cars are wobbling and wibbling. And I have to be at Brendam by tea time to pick up the island inspector. No problem, Gordon. We fix wobbling wheels. Over there, please, next to Whiff and Scruff. Scruff has a scrunched scruncher. Gordon stared snootily. Whiff was whiffy. Hello, Gordon! Gordon sniffed sniffily. Hello. My name's Whiff. 
And this is Scruff the Scruncher. I know. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Gordon, I have a very important job for you. Of course, sir. Today is Clean Sodor Day. It will be a very busy day at Whiff's Waste Dump. Scruff's scruncher has scrunched. Whiff will wait with him here. So you, Gordon, must be in charge of Whiff's Waste Dump. Oh, what fun! Oh, what an honor. Oh, the indignity. Gordon didn't want to work at Whiff's Waste Dump. Gordon thought it was the smelliest place on Sodor. Good luck, Gordon! And Gordon huffed heavily away. Gordon steamed snootily into Whiff's Waste Dump. It was smelly. Oh, the indignity! Then, Gordon heard a worrying whistle. Bust my buffers! It's Spencer! I cannot let Spencer see that I'm working at the dump. He'll laugh till his boiler bursts. <gasps> I must hide. So Gordon shoved quickly away as Spencer slid smugly into the dump. Pumping pistons, what a pung! This is the pungiest place I've ever puffed to. Which pungy engine is in charge here? Gordon gasped and Gordon gulped. He hardly dared puff. I've left the Duke and Duchess's garbage to pong with all the rest. And Spencer steams snootily away. Gordon puffs slowly out of hiding. Oh, the indignity. Which pongy engine is in charge here? I am not a pongy engine. I am Gordon, fastest and best, and pulls the express. Just then, Gordon heard another whistle. Fizzling fireboxes! It's James. I cannot let James see that I'm working at the dump. He's the snootiest Sodor engine. I must hide! So Gordon chuffed quickly away as James huffed heavily in. <gasps> Withy woo, what a mess! This must be the stinkiest spot on Sodor! Gordon shuddered and shuddered. Ugh, only stinky steamies work here. Oh, the indignity. I'm not a stinky steamy. I am Gordon, fastest and best, and pulls the express. Now I suppose I must shunt these whiffy wagons to the garbage crusher. Just then, Gordon heard a hoot. Flaming funnels, it's Diesel. I cannot let Diesel see that I'm working at the dump. He will tease me terribly. I must hide. So Gordon chuffed quickly away as Diesel boiled in. Smells and bells. Only a stinky steamy could leave all these stinky freight cars here. Gordon's rods rattled. Then there was trouble. Sir Topham had arrived on Thomas. Whiff chuffed behind with Scruff. Sir Topham Hat was cross. Whiff's waste dump was a mess. Garbage cars were everywhere. They hadn't been emptied into the garbage crusher. And Gordon was nowhere to be seen. Gordon! Where are you? Gordon shuddered with shame. Here I am, sir. But try as he might, Gordon couldn't puff out to Sir Topham Hatt. All the tracks were blocked by freight cars. Oh, the indignity. No, Gordon. Oh, the silliness. On clean Sodor Day, no job was more important than to be in charge of Whiff's Waste Dump. 
Gordon stopped huffing and heaving. Sir, I have not been a really useful engine. I thought I was too grand to work with garbage. But I was being silly. Whiff, you are a very grand and important engine. Whiff was surprised. No one had called him grand before. Don't worry, Gordon. I can help you. No, I can help you. I will shunt all these garbage wagons into the garbage crusher. Uh, please, sir, may Whiff pull the express car to Brendam Docks to pick up the island inspector? Yes, he can. Whiff thought his pistons would pop with pride. Thank you, Gordon. Right away, Gordon. Express coming through. I'll help you, Gordon. Thank you, Scruff. I'll huff and I'll puff till the whole dump is clean. You can do it, Gordon. So Gordon heaved and hauled. Scruff shunted and shoved. It was hard, hard work. It took a long, long time. But Gordon didn't give up. Later, Whiff's waste dump was tidy and clean. Then Whiff chuffed cheerfully in with Sir Topham Hatt and the island inspector. And this, sir, is Whiff's waste dump. Whiff is usually in charge. Today, he has been helped by Gordon. Very good work, Gordon. Very good work indeed. This made Gordon very proud indeed. Whiff whistled. Scruff cheered. Hooray! And Gordon glowed. Hooray for Clean Sodor Day! A job well done! I may be quite smelly, but it really was fun! Merry Misty Island! The winter holidays are a very special time on the island of Sodor. The engines always look forward to it. There are parties and presents trees and tinsel, lights and laughter. There was a lot of excitement at the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Sir Topham Hatt's office had sparkling lights, and Harold hovered happily. Christmas tree coming in! Dash, Dash, and Ferdinand puffed out of the Misty Island Tunnel. They had been working hard at the Misty Island Logging Station. Mind your funnels! Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand stuttered to a stop. Jumping Joby Wood! What's happening? We're getting ready for our winter holiday party! What's a winter holiday party? You make the place bright with streamers and lights. You laugh and you play. You have a great day. And you ask all your friends to the fun. Rattling rods. We never had a winter holiday party on Misty Island. Why not? We didn't know any friends to ask to join in the fun. That's right. Well, now you have lots of friends. That made Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand smile. And they chattered off chirpily to deliver the Joby Wood. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clattered into the docks. Then they gasped. Oh, me! Oh, my! There's a star in the sky! That's right. I'm getting ready for the winter holiday party. Why don't we have a winter holiday party? You don't know how to have a party. Yes, yes we, we do. do. Would you like me to help you? No, thank you, Thomas. 
Parties are easy. You must all come to our party. That's right. Thomas chuffed cheerfully away. The logging locos puffed to plan their party. We need streamers and stars. And bubbles and bells. Like those over there. Bash Dash and Ferdinand looked at some cars. They were loaded with decorations. Tip top! So Bash was coupled to a car. And the logging locos giggled and jiggled away from the docks. Gordon and Henry were at Marin Station. We're having a party! We'll party all night! Tell your friends to come over. Join the fun! That's right. Henry and Gordon were surprised. Would you like some help? No, thank you! <laughs> Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clickety-clacked into the logging station. They were very excited. Just one thing. Where do you put bobbles and bells? And streamers and stars. The logging locos puffed, puzzled. I don't know. I know. On old Wheezy. Tip top! Later, Old Wheezy was covered in baubles and bells. The logging locos were very pleased. We need more decorations. We must go back to Sodor. Stay here, Ferdinand, and find us a tree. That's important. Ferdinand chuffed up and down hills, through the hollow tree tunnel, and under old mills until at last he came in sight of a Christmas tree that was just right. Bash and Dash clattered back to Sodu. At the docks, Dash was coupled up to another car of decorations, and they giggled and wiggled away. Percy and Toby were at Maithwaite Station. We're having a party! We'll party all night! Tell Sir Topham Hat to come over. Join the fun. That's, That's right. Percy and Toby were excited. Do you need any help? No, no thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> On Misty Island, Hee Haw was now covered in baubles and bells, and streamers and stars. Bash and Dash were pleased. Tip top. Here's the Christmas tree. Oh, me. Oh, my. Ferdinand sighed. Do you think that's right? I don't know. It'll be fine with a star. That's right. Suddenly, the logging locos heard the hooting and tooting of engines on the track. It's party time! Sir Topham Hat and the other engines chuffed and puffed in. Welcome to the Merry Misty Island Party! That's right! Then there was trouble. Old Wheezy and Hee Haw started to cough and to splutter. Then they jittered and juttered. Baubles and bells bounced and bumped. Streamers and stars shuddered and shook. Then Old Wheezy rocked and rolled. And the Joby Log Christmas tree flew high in the sky and splashed into the pond. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. This isn't fun at all. Bash Dash and Ferdinand were upset. We wanted to have the best party of all. But now it's the worst. That's right. We didn't want to be helped. And now it's a mess. We were silly. 
Will you help us now, Thomas? Of course I will. We all will. That's right. So Thomas helped Ferdinand choose a Christmas tree. Cranky lent Dash his star. I don't believe it. And the children gave Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand handmade decorations. They're for your Misty Island party. Later, all the engines and Sir Topham Hat were at the logging station for the Misty Island party. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand looked round. They wished with wonder and puffed with pride. Thank you all for helping us. And thank you for being our friends. You have made this the best winter holiday party of all. Merry Misty Island. Island. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> Thomas's tall friend. The island of Sodor has many wonderful places to visit. Today was a special day. A new animal park was to be opened on Sodor. There were wide open spaces for the animals to live in. All the engines were very excited. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. He beamed from buffer to buffer. Good morning, Percy. Good morning, Thomas. Look at my special leaves to feed the animals. I have rosy red apples for the animals. And I am to take the mayor and Sir Topham Hat to open the park. Do you have a special, Thomas? I am to take the tallest animal on Sodor up to the animal park. Percy and Edward gasped. What is it, Thomas? It's a giraffe. All the engines wished with wonder. They had never seen a giraffe before. Fizzling fireboxes, Mr. Giraffe. You are very tall. Edward, Gordon, and Percy were puzzled. Will he blow over? Why is he so spotty? Does he sit down? Of course he'll sit down. You must wait for the giraffe keeper. The giraffe will do what his keeper tells him. But Thomas didn't want to wait for the giraffe keeper. He wanted to show the children the tallest animal on Sodor. Don't worry, Cranky. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. And Thomas puffed proudly out of the docks. Thomas and the giraffe puffed happily along. Children waved and whooped, and Thomas's firebox fizzed with excitement. Thomas slowed as he puffed to a low bridge. Sit down, Mr. Giraffe. The giraffe didn't want to sit down. He wanted to see the sights of Sodor. Thomas wished. Then he heard a familiar whistle. It was Gordon. He was taking the mayor and Sir Topham Hat to the animal park. Out of the way! Express coming through! I can't go under the bridge with Mr. Giraffe. This made Gordon grumpy. You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Gordon. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. So, Gordon huffed huffily away. 
But Thomas didn't know how to make the giraffe sit down. Thomas saw some cows. They munched merrily, then lay lazily in the sun. Edward chuffed up. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Edward, can Mr. Giraffe eat some of your apples? Why, Thomas? Because then he will feel sleepy and lie down. Edward was puzzled, but he wanted to help his friend Thomas. Thank you, Edward. The giraffe liked Edward's rosy red apples. He liked them so much, he ate and ate and ate. And he didn't sit down. Edward was upset. Bubbling boilers! You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Edward. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. But Thomas was worried. Sir Topham Hatt and the mayor would be waiting at the animal park. Then, Percy puffed past. Hello, Thomas. What's the matter? Mr. Giraffe won't sit down. Can he eat some of your leaves? Then he's sure to want to lie down and sleep. Percy was happy to help his best friend Thomas. The giraffe liked Percy's leaves. He thought they were a wonderful game. Leaves flittered and floated through the air until there were none left at all. Cinders and ashes! I only wanted you to sit down, Mr. Giraffe. Suddenly, the giraffe did sit down, and he closed his eyes. Mr. Giraffe's asleep, Percy. We must steam straight to the animal park. So, Thomas and Percy clickety-clack along the track and under the bridge to the animal park. Then there was trouble. The mayor and Sir Topham Hatt were cross. They had waited a long time for the tallest animal on Sodor. But the tallest animal on Sodor was fast asleep. Wake up, Mr. Giraffe, please! But the giraffe slept on. This is a disaster, Thomas. Thomas felt terrible. There were no rosy red apples, no juicy leaves, and no wide awake Mr. Giraffe. I know, sir. It is a disaster. I should have waited for the giraffe keeper. I was silly to think Mr. Giraffe would do what I told him. I'll puff my hardest to the docks and bring the keeper here. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. The giraffe keeper was at the docks. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir. All aboard! The giraffe was still asleep when Thomas puffed into the animal park. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will wake up now you're here, sir. And then Thomas chuffed away. He had a lot to do. At Farmer McCall's farm, Thomas picked up more rosy red apples. And from the orchard, more juicy leaves. At last, Thomas puffed and shoved and huffed back to the animal park. Everyone was cheering and clapping Sodor's tallest animal. Mr. Giraffe, you're awake! The giraffe heard Thomas's toot. He stretched his long neck up, 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 and then down to Thomas's face. Welcome to Sodor, Mr. Giraffe.
James in the Dark. The sun was setting at the end of another busy day on the island of Sodor. All the engines were very excited. Alicia Bati was to sing in the town square that evening. Sir Topham Hatt had a very special job for James. James, you will bring Alicia Botti, the mayor, and the Sodor Brass Band to the concert. Yes, sir. It will be very dark tonight. You must have a lamp fitted. Yes, sir. <laughs> James puffed happily to the steamworks. Victor and Kevin were there. Hello, James, my friend. Your paintwork looks especially shiny. That made James very happy. That's because everyone must look their best for the concert tonight. Sorry, boss. Slip and a hook. A workman brought a lamp for James. James didn't like the lamp. This lamp will make me look silly. Everyone at the concert will look their best except me. The workman tried to fit the lamp to James's boiler. Then to his buffer. Then to his funnel. The workman had tried his best. But still, James did not like his lamp. It makes me look silly. I will not wear that silly lamp. And James puffed huffily out of the steamworks to pick up the very important visitors. Later at the next junction, James met an engine. The engine was Thomas. Thomas's lamp was shining brightly. Hello, James. Where's your lamp? It was dark now. James couldn't see which engine was there. Lamps just make engines look silly. Goodbye, Henry. I'm not Henry. I'm Thomas. But James didn't hear. He was already puffing away into the darkness. The evening became darker and darker. Now James could see even less. Then there was trouble. There was a station ahead. This is where I pick up Alicia Botti and the mayor. All aboard! But James hadn't picked up Alicia Botti and the mayor. He had picked up Farmer McColl and his prize cow. James hadn't seen them on the platform. It was too dark. James could hardly see anything. At the next junction, James met an engine. The engine was Edward. Edward had his lamp on. Hello, James. Where's your lamp? James couldn't see which engine was there. Lamps make engines look silly. Goodbye, Percy. I'm not Percy. I'm Edward. But James didn't hear. He was already chuffing into the darkness. The night was now very dark. This is where I pick up the Sodor Brass Band. But it wasn't the Sodor Brass Band. It was Farmer Trotter and his herd of prize pigs. All aboard! But James couldn't see them on the platform. James couldn't see anything. It was too dark. At last, James chuffed into the town hall. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Here I am, sir. 
I have picked up all our very important visitors. James, what have you done? You have brought Farmer McCall and his cow, and Farmer Trotter and his pigs. I was expecting Alicia Botty and the mayor. James felt terrible. Bust my buffers. I thought a lamp made me look silly. Now I really look silly. I'm sorry, sir. This is all my fault. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Please, sir, I will have my lamp fixed. Then I will race like the wind to deliver Farmer McCall and Farmer Trotter to Brendam. Later, I will pick up the very important visitors. Just then, Thomas puffed in. He had the workman with James's lamp in his cab. This time, James let the workman fit the lamp, and he didn't feel silly. Edward steamed in. Hello, James. Your lamp looks good. I know. Now I can see really well in the dark. But you are still late, James. James was worried. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Sir, can Thomas and Edward pick up the visitors? And I will go to Brendam. That's a good idea, James. Then you must come straight back here. Yes, sir. So, James set off for Brendam Docks. His new lamp glowed brightly in the dark. James arrived at the docks just in time. Goodbye! Then, James pumped his pistons. He set off once more for the town hall. James chuffed happily along. Now, he could see everything in the dark. James liked having a lamp. I can see how beautiful Sodor looks at night. James puffed into the town square. Alicia Botti was singing sweetly. Then James gasped. There was another surprise. Thomas and Edward were using their strong lamps to light the concert. Please, sir, may I shine my lamp on Miss Botti? Then everyone will see her for miles around. Very well, James. Now, James didn't feel silly at all. He felt very, very important. And when Alicia Botti smiled at him, James couldn't have felt more proud of his bright, beaming lamp. Charlie and Eddie. On the island of Sodor, all the engines are proud to work for Sir Topham Hatt's railway. They chuff and puff, and heave and haul their hardest to make sure Sir Topham Hatt is proud of them. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt's car had broken down. Edward was to take the car to Marin Station. The mechanic was waiting there to fix it. Edward was proud to help Sir Topham Hatt. Just then, Charlie chuffed cheerily in. Good morning, Charlie. Hello, Edward. Do you want to hear a good joke? Where do crocodiles keep their money? I don't know. In a river bank. <laughs> but Edward didn't laugh. He didn't even smile. I have an important job to do. I have to take Sir Topham Hatt's car to Marin Station to be fixed. He needs it this evening. I must hurry. Charlie sighed. 
You know, Edward, maybe you're too old to be fun. Edward stopped. He didn't like being told that he was too old to be fun. He thought he was as much fun as any young engine. I can be a lot of fun, Charlie. Then show me. Edward huffed and puffed. He knew he should chuff carefully to Marin Station with Sir Topham Hatt's car. But he also knew Charlie wouldn't think that was fun. So, Edward decided not to take the careful track. Follow me, Charlie. I'll take you on the bumpiest and jumpiest, the twistiest and turniest tracks to Marin Station. Then you'll see just how much fun I can be. I'm ready, Eddie. So Edward puffed away to Marin Station, with Charlie chuffing close behind. First, Edward and Charlie clickety-clacked along the bumpiest tracks. They jiggled and joggled, and they bumped and they jumped. Wee-hee-hee! This is fun! Next, Edward and Charlie rattled round some of the bendiest bends. Fizzling fireboxes! I didn't think you'd be this much fun, Edward! This made Edward happy. Edward and Charlie rocked and they rolled. They giggled and jiggled. And they told jokes. Okay, Charlie, I have a joke for you. How do you know when an engine is eating? Uh, I don't know, Eddie. Tell me. You hear it? Chewing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Eddie. You really are the most fun of all. At last, Edward and Charlie puffed into Marin Station. Thomas was there, but there was no mechanic on the platform. Hello, Edward. The mechanic was waiting for you. Now he's left on Bertie the bus. Suddenly, Edward was worried. Oh, my. I spent too much time on the bumpy and bendy tracks having fun. Charlie sighed. Is that as much fun as you could be, Edward? Edward didn't like that. No, I can be much more fun than that. We'll chase Bertie the bus to catch up with the mechanic. Good idea! I'm ready, Eddie! So, Edward and Charlie pumped their pistons and chuffed off for the chase. Edward and Charlie raced and chased after Bertie the bus. They thundered through crossings. They flew over bridges. And they clattered through tunnels. But Edward and Charlie couldn't catch up with Bertie. Flat my funnel! That was fun! Now, Edward was even more worried. He had not done his job. Sir Topham Hatt would be cross. I think we should stop at the next junction. Then we can ask the signal man to send a message to the mechanic. I was right. You are too old to be fun. Edward didn't like that. Then an idea flew into his funnel. We'll take Sir Topham Hatt's car to the steamworks to be fixed. It's always fun there. Charlie was surprised. Bubbling boilers, Edward! That will be the most fun of all! I'm ready, Eddie! So, Charlie and Edward puffed off to the steamworks. Charlie and Edward steamed in. Hello, Kevin. Where's Victor? Hello, Edward. Victor has gone to pick up a part. Can I help? I'd like you to fix Sir Topham Hatt's car. Kevin was surprised. Sling my hook. We don't fix cars. I'm sure you can. We will be back later to pick up the car. Edward, you're not too old to have fun. You're the most fun of all. That made Edward very happy. Later, Charlie and Edward returned.
Kevin was very excited. Here you are, Edward. Kevin trundled to one side. He giggled giddily. <laughs> there was Sir Topham Hatt's car with a funnel on its roof. It's a fun funnel. Edward gasped. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt arrived. He didn't think the funnel was fun at all. Edward, what have you done to my car? Edward felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to be really useful and really fun. But it has all gone wrong. This is a disaster. I wish I had just been really useful. So do I, Edward. Please, sir. I can take you and Lady Hat this evening. Then, tomorrow morning, your car will be fixed. Very well, Edward. Edward had puffed into Knapford Station with Sir Topham and Lady Hat. Charlie was there. Hello, Eddie. I'm ready for more fun. Not now, Charlie. It's not the time for fun. It's the time to be really useful. I have to hurry to the steamworks. Edward puffed into the steamworks. Charlie chuffed close behind. Would you like to hear another joke, Edward? No, thank you, Charlie. This isn't the time for jokes. I have to collect Sir Topham Hatt's car. Kevin. Please, take the funnel off Sir Topham Hatt's car. It was fun, but it wasn't really useful. Right, boss. Uh, Edward, whatever you say. Thank you, Kevin. Later, Edward puffed out of the steamworks with Sir Topham Hatt's car. It was as good as new and funnel free. All along the track, as Edward clickety-clacked, children whistled and waved. This is fun. And Charlie had to agree. <laughs>